I was talking to Sam Honzak, and honestly, he seemed more excited about drawing the penalty in the corner last night than he did about his points. Uh, what, what did you like about his game? Um, have I liked it? Well, we started from the beginning of camp. One, he's gotten better every day, but now he's playing like a confident player. So, you know, when we look at a situation like drawing that penalty, um, how does he react after that? Because he's going in the, the corner in the scrum against a bigger defenseman that was hard on him. So a lot of younger guys may in that situation shy away, but I actually thought his game got better uh, after that. So um, he's done a lot of really good things. What Number one thing for him is he's skating. Uh, yeah. And when he's moving his feet, he's a really noticeable player. We know that he's a high skill guy. Like I am not going to pretend that I've watched a ton of him playing in junior. Yeah. But is that that sort of willingness to go in and you know sacrifice his body a little bit? Is that a big part of his game? Um, listen, I, I go from what I've seen too, and and last year when he was in our camp, um, it, it's such a maybe it's a learning lesson for me too along the way. Like you see these young guys come in and you have um, expectations that oh this guy's a first rounder, he's going to be. Um, the next coming coming in and it's hard on the young guys when they first get in because they recognize um, you know these NHL players are pretty good players so it takes a little bit of a hit to their confidence at times um, but what he's done is is gone away in the summer and he's worked really hard um, and he's come back and I think he's now realizing that I don't have to take a step back um, with these guys anymore so he knows he's a good player so seeing the um, the kind of development that he's gone through in one short year is it's pretty impressive and he's, he's as I said he's done a really good job probably been one of our more noticeable forwards overall for him would it be similar to kind of what you talked about yesterday with Coronado with how he'd be able to potentially be used like could if he was on the fourth line could still get power play time like would he be in that similar type of conversation for making um, this team I, I think again a little bit different player like um, with Hanzik, I also see a guy that's capable of killing penalties because of the speed and his size. So I, I, you know, I think there's different roles that are available for a, a player like that because he's kind of that Swiss Army knife, I find. So when he's playing the right way and when he's playing the way he is now, he gives us options. So hopefully he'll continue to really push himself and believe that he can be a really great player. Matt Fagredin and uh, Andrew Basho are going back to the junior yeah. teams, which was expected, obviously, for guys their age. But uh, what did you see from them? I, I thought both were excellent. Um, with Grids first, like you can see the skill set, and and he's already as a young 18 year old, like he's a man. <laughs> so um, I almost envision him as a guy that's going to go away and he's going to dominate um, in the queue, and he's going to come back next year and be in a position to make our team. Like you have a sense uh, about him. He, he's he, he's got the ability to play the game. Um, and, and with Bash, right from development camp, the puck seemed to follow him around a lot. And what I really liked about his game was he, he didn't shy away from anything. In the games that he played at the NHL level, he was uh, as competitive on the puck as he was in Penticton. Um, and he played with confidence that I feel like was kind of beyond his years right now. So we're really excited about both these young guys. Matt Vey, I mean, going, I'm sorry, I apologize, with Basha, uh, going back to a Medicine Hat team that yeah. is expected to be a yeah. really good team. I mean, how much can that just help a guy? Because, you know, he's going to be presumably competing for some real trophies. This yeah, season. and one with a good team, our expectation is that he's going to be the guy that drives it. You know, we want him to be the guy that is the hardest working guy. He's setting the, the pace in practice. Um, all good teams, their top players are their hardest working, best players. And that's what we want him to be. So he has an opportunity to do that on a team that's going to be very competitive. So um, it's a good program in Medicine Hat. And, um, you know, I, we know he's going to do some great things there. A nice part about Medicine Hat, he's close to. Yeah. So you'll be able to see him a few times here. Ryan, I've um, asked a few times about uh, Kevin Ball. Like, are, are, is he imminent, ready to rejoin um, one of the groups? Kind of expecting him to skate tomorrow, so we'll we'll see how that goes. So there's a pretty good chance he might be in one of our our yeah. groups tomorrow. And yeah. Those, those maintenance days, just uh, precautionary things. For yeah, them. there's. I, I think at this time of year, you probably get that a lot around the league, where um, you know five six days of hard skates. Um, there's strains and little tweaks where guys are like, nah, maybe it doesn't make sense to push through it right now. So. Uh, maintenance days right now, and I'm assuming we'll get all those guys back um, right away. Uh, I was talking to Jacob Peltier, and, and he was just saying his mindset now is, you know, he he's not taking a day in this league for granted. Mm -hmm. Like he learned a lot from a trying few months last season, maybe more off the ice. Where have you seen sort of the evolution of Jacob in the past six months here? Uh, well, if you go back to when his injury uh, 
you know, once he came back from it, he was really excited to get going again. He had that life and then he got hurt again. So it was a, a little bit of a challenge for him. And over the summer, I thought he had an opportunity to kind of clear his head and just really get after it and find the, the passion and the love for the game that he has. So um, for him, he's just come in and I think he has a, a, an understanding of what he needs to do now. You know, the challenge always will be when more teams play their, their older more veteran lineups how do you impact the game for us so a lot of times with jacob we look at his speed so he has to be a guy that's pressuring teams into mistakes and getting them to throw the puck away that's how he's an effective player so he's got to be able to impact games moving forward like we know he can have you seen that element like that speed that tenacity have you seen that in these practices and in games uh yeah stretches of it like we want it to be like consistent that's the biggest thing to be uh, a really good full-time nhl player they find a way to do it all the time so we've seen stretches last night in vancouver where i thought it was his speed was really good um and then the stretches were wasn't quite there so it's it's finding a way to do it every shift which is a, a tall task for sure I with Devin Cooley, I mean, we interviewed him today, and like, he's got an energy that just feels oh. contagious. Yeah. Um, what's it like having him around, and, and what's he bringing to the, the goalie room, I guess? Um, well, one, there's some pretty good competition going on right now, so he's not here to be uh, someone that's going to watch other guys play. He's coming to, to make our team, which is one thing that is important for us. Um, but he's, he's <laughs> I don't know how you even describe it, he's got... He's got energy about him for sure. And Ryan Lauberg, similar type guy. Um, they make people feel good. Uh, they make people laugh at times because they're just, their personality is pretty special. So the more we get to know him, the more guys are starting to really appreciate what he's all about.